Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing very well. Today we're in the Mirage 2000C and we're looking at the RWR, the radar warning receiver and the jammer or the ECN. First we'll look exclusively at the RWR. So this screen here is the RWR and an RWR is a passive system that listens to external radar sources, uh, search radars, track radars from SAMs, from ships, from other aircraft and so on. It does not distinguish between friend and foe. With that information it presents it on a top-down azimuth and strength based display here to add to our situational awareness. So what we can say is that off to the 11 o'clock we've got a UK that's an unknown and off to our 2 to 3 o'clock we've got an M2 that's a Mirage 2000. Soon we will hit a SAM battery out there and it will show the SAM battery too. Like I said it's azimuth based so that would be 12 o'clock that would be 6 o'clock as well as that the strength of the radar signal will display how close the icon is to us there. So the stronger a signal gets, the closer this mirage is going to display to us. So it can be used very roughly, but only very roughly, as a measure of distance. Caveat to that is that some radars are stronger than others. For a full list of the different codes for the different aircraft and sound batteries, etc., I'll blink that up on the screen here, and then you can uh, screenshot that if you want and look at it further. If a icon has a hat, a chevron on it like that, it's an airborne target. If it has a box around it, it is a ground target. If it has a diamond around it, oh, there's another guy. If it has a diamond around it, then it is a missile-borne radar, like a Phoenix or an Amram missile. As well as visual, it gives us various beeps, and we'll have a look into that. So you, you heard the chirp that came on as the new contact came on. What we've got is a UK, an unknown, which I can tell you is a boat over there. We've got our SA-6 at 1 o'clock there. It's ground target because it's got the box, and that's its rough signal strength. And the Mirage 2000 is an air target, and that's over there. We've got the brightness knob there. We can turn it on with our RWR here. The down position is off, and then we've got on, and then we've got test. So we're going to use on in operation lights here is the jammer warmed up is it running we'll look at that in a bit is the jammer jamming is the rwr functional and um, function of the mws and is the chaff and flare dispensing system on as we get closer to the situation and missiles uh, he starts tracking us we will be given an audio and visual warning that he is tracking us and as well as that if a missile is fired at us we'll be giving warnings of that as well so let's just punch through and see what happens Okay, he is now spiking us. So previously he was just scanning us, but now he's actually tracking us, which means he can now shoot us down. We're being warned with a tone, and we've also got a circle around him here. So it's not going to be long now before he has a shot at us. You can see as well, pixel by pixel, he's getting closer and closer towards us. We're in the middle there, obviously, and that is the signal strength getting stronger and stronger. That is the tone to say that he's now firing us, that is now supporting a missile, and you can see the missile there. So now you obviously take defensive action to get out of the way. One thing to point out, we do have, like all our RWR systems, dead zones, black spots that we can't detect threat in. I'll flash it up on the screen there. So for instance, above us or below us is a black spot and we cannot detect that. So it's tempting to think that the missile is no longer firing if we put it in our black spot. Like there, you saw it disappear from there. You see it disappears there. Uh, that's not that the missile's not tracking us. It is. It's just that it's in our black spot there. As soon as we took it out of our black spot, we can see that it is actually still active and firing at us. The only thing I need to add is to circles, low priority uh, around the outside here. So you can see this guy is relatively low priority, low priority, high priority. This is the critical threat here, this circle here. And you can only enter the critical circle if you are being tracked and or fired upon so this guy is considered critical because he's firing a missile at us therefore he's allowed to move to the critical circle there that's the rwr now we're going to reset and look at the ecm or the jammer so for the jammer or the ecm it is off there on there and testing there when it's on we have three options we can have it in standby where it's warmed up and ready to go but not emitting square where it is emitting on command pcm where it is emitting all the time we need to look at the command for emitting and it is that command there that toggles it on and off to see whether it's emitting or not it is that light there so that means it's got power that means it's emitting or not so on off on off and pcm it's on all the time so i'm sure you all know what noise jamming does but in case you don't if a hostile that same sam site was tracking me like he did and or firing a missile then i would want to turn on my jammer emissions and that would make it harder for him to track me the missile may miss or he may just lose track 
all together or I can have jam emission on all the time so if I don't want to have to worry about it with PCM or I could have the square box mode on and I could set jammer on before I went in to the danger zone. There's different ways depending on how you want to use it. Generally speaking though, if you're trying to be stealthy, having your jammer on makes you very visible. So the best method or the normal method is to have it under square here and just turn it on when you think you need to turn it on to defeat a hostile radar. So all I've got to say about the RWR and the ECM. I hope that helps and see you later.